come to engineering simple. So in the previous video, I calculated the line to ground fault that would be imposed on the low voltage side, which I calculated to be 11,000 amps. Then I asked the question, how can we limit this fault current to 6,000 amps? Because 11,000 is a lot, you know, you, I mean, you might be able to buy a breaker, like I said in the introduction, that would limit this, that would interrupt this false current, but it might be too big for the breaker, and then the breaker would be big, and there are other consequences. What if we limit the false current to 6,000 amp? So, option one, add the neutral ground in the reactor. So basically, you would go to the low voltage, so you have x1 bush in x2 x3 you add the reactants basically and you should ground the uh, reactor and i stated that this reactance would only impact the zero sequence uh, impedance calculation so so if you go back to to this diagram really so you would kind of recalculate the zero sequence impedance, then you would just add three times the reactants we are looking for. So, I think I can fit it here. So, I'll just so the, the equivalent zero sequence impedance from the diagram is one point four two, which is in parallel with. 48.49% plus three times the reactance of the neutral grounded reactor plus 10.26%. So that's the new zero sequence impedance. So basically, So if you look at the previous calculation of the zero sequence impedance this year, really what I added is just this term here. So what I did, I added this three times the reactance of the ground, neutral grounding reactor. So now, so I can simplify this. So it's two impedances in parallel. It's just the product of the two impedances divided by the, their sum. So plus 3x plus 10.26. So you can simplify this further and you get 11.64 plus 3 times x. And we know the phase to ground fault on phase A, if we assume phase A fault is equal to 3 times 100, which is 300, divided by the sum of the equivalent positive sequence impedance, negative impedance, zero sequence impedance. So it's 300 divided by 0.64 Sorry, I can go ahead and include the base, the base current. Because this, this term here will give me the per unit, but I, I can multiply by 
27 MVA divided by 12 kV square root of 3. This is the base amps. So this fault current I want to limit to 6,000 amps because that's my question. Because I have this value here, I have this value, but the zero sequence impedance has the this term here that I have to calculate for. So then, basically, it just depends. Simple, simple algebra. So, 11.2, which is the positive sequence impedance, plus 11.2, plus this is a negative sequence. This is a zero sequence plus 3x is equal to 300 times 27. Thousand divided by six thousand times twelve square root of three. And again, basically, I just rearranged this here. So you have three hundred divided by the sum of these impedances equals to six thousand. Sorry, three three hundred divided by the sum of the impedances times the base current equal to 6,000, then I just rearrange to, so I can solve for x. So then I can simplify further. So 3x is equal to basically 300 times 27,000 divided by 6,000. 12 root 3 minus because I'm going to move this these numbers here I'm going to move them so I'm going to change their sign so sorry minus 11.2 minus 11.64 so if I solve this I get x is equal to Nine point percent. So that's the reactance that I need to connect to the low side neutral to limit the fault current to 6000 amps. And since it's connected to the low voltage, I can calculate this in, in ohms. So 9.49 percent times the low voltage is 12 kV so 12 kV so it's basically the base MVA is a voltage squared divided by the rated MVA so 12 kV squared divided by 27 MVA so kV squared is kind of uh, you have megavolts, so they cancel each other. So this is just the the base in, in the, uh, base uh, impedance of the low voltage. So then X is equal to 0 0.54 ohms. So that's the reactance that I need to connect to the low voltage and neutral to limit the fault current to 6,000 amps. So we can go back and let's verify if this value of the reactance will indeed limit the current to 6,000 amps. So I'll calculate the phase to ground fault current again so it's 3 times 100 divided by the sum of the equivalent impedances. So 
the positive sequence impedance is 11.2, the negative sequence impedance is 11.2 plus, plus 11.64 plus three times the reactance, so three times 9.49%. All these values are in, in percent. So this, this here would give me per unit so this result here will give me per unit. So if I multiply by the base, by the base current, which is 27 MVA divided by 12 kV square root of three. So this just, I base of the low voltage side. Then, so if I carry out the calculation, I get 5,999.58 amps, which is barely less than 6,000 amps. So, so check. So, so by adding a neutral grounded reactor a reactor with a reactance of 0 0.54 ohms to the neutral of the low voltage side i reduced the current from 11000 i can write 11000 amps to 6000 amps so i did that by basically you have the high side so you just you know you have bushing ho and it's grounded and you have h1 h2 so these are bushings basically h3 then for the low voltage so you have x1 bushing x2 bushing x3 bushing then the neutral comes to uh, xo bushing but then i connected a neutral grounding reactor with 0 0.4 ohm reactants then it's grounded that way i can limit the fault current on the you know on the low voltage side to to 6000 amps instead of 11000 amps so basically that's that's the advantage of connecting the this neutral reactor to the low voltage so that was it for this video and the next video uh, instead of the neutral grounded reactor, I will uh, find a neutral grounded resistor that would limit the line to ground fault to 6000 amps. Then we can check and see the difference. So stay tuned and have a great time. Thank you.